America's Got Talent is and will always be that like moment in my life that like was like a dream come true. It was a dream that I never even had, you know, until I was experiencing it. And I realized that this is something that I've always wanted to do. I just never dared to dream for something like this. This is Kechi Okuchi. Kechi is Nigerian born author and an award-winning singer. You may recognize her from her performance on America's Got Talent. She's an inspirational and TEDx keynote speaker, bully prevention advocate, and an MBA student here at the University of St. Thomas. In this episode of Bold, we talked about Kechi's wild ride from graduating with a business degree from UST to participating in America's Got Talent and the whirlwind of publicity that came after. We talked about Kechi's return to St. Thomas and why she's pursuing an MBA with a focus in entrepreneurship. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Max Studios and hit that bell icon so that you're the first to see all our newest shows. And check us out on Instagram at MaxStudioUST to stay in the loop and get a behind the scenes sneak peek at everything that we're working on. Now, let's jump into this episode of Bold with Ketchy. Hi, I'm Isabel Garcia. I'm studying education at the University of St. Thomas in Houston, and I'm the host of Bold. Bold is a podcast that aims to inspire students to be your bold self through conversation with students and alumni. Hi guys, welcome back to Bold. My name is Isabel Garcia and I'm your host. Today, I'm here with Kechi Okuchi. <laughs> welcome to Bold. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, I'm so happy you're here. It's going to be so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here too. So can you like introduce yourself? Give me like a little sneak peek of like who you are. Okay, so hi, my name is Kechi Okuchi. I'm 31 years old. I am a singer. I'm a songwriter. I am... A uh, burn survivor, obviously. I'm also a burn survivor advocate and soon to be author. It's really cool to be able to say that out loud. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I'm also a bullying prevention advocate. And now I am also a student at USD. <laughs> wow, that is so much. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so you also did your undergrad here at St. Thomas, yes. right? Okay, yeah. let's start there. Let's okay. start, we always start like, how did you end up at St. Thomas? Yes, okay, so St. Thomas is... Um, so the way things happened was I was still a patient at um, Shriners um, Hospital for Children, the Burns Hospital here in, um, in uh, Texas. And um, I had come in to the one in Houston for surgery because Hurricane Ike had happened, like this was a while ago. And so everything that was going on in Galveston, the Burns Hospital there, moved over to Shriners in Houston. Okay. So that was where I was now doing my treatments temporarily. While I was there, they had a college workshop. I had just graduated high school, so I was interested. So I went to see the workshop and it was um, University of Houston, Rice and uh, St. Thomas. And I remember just really liking the vibe of the lady that represented this school. She worked in the disabilities um, um, center for the school. I went and I heard their pitches about their school. I took the uh, no, the. Um, pamphlets and things that they had to like, you know, explain how the school was. And the, the woman was just really receptive. You know, she was very, you know, open, um, answered all my questions. And um, I also liked the, um, 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 the Houston, University of Houston rep. But um, at the end of the day, I, I actually applied to all three schools. Um, Rice got back to me first and told me that um, they waitlisted me for the next semester. I wanted to start that fall, so that was a no-go. And then Yovich just never got back to me. <laughs> um, and then St. Thomas got back to me, yeah, and got back to me with, so Rice also gave me a scholarship, but it was a half, and I would have to wait a semester. So, but you, um, St. Thomas gave me a full ride, and um, that was like obviously a no-brainer. So um, yeah, so that's basically how I started here. And I remember the first time I walked into the campus before I made my final decision, what I really, what endeared me to the place was how familiar it was. It reminded me of my high school. I went to a boarding high school in Nigeria and it was just a really peaceful kind of campus, I remember. And walking in here gave me exactly that same vibe. So I just, I really liked that. and. Um, that was really, I think the main, the feeling I had when I walked in was really what I liked. And so that's what drove me to like pursue St. Thomas. Yeah, I feel like you always get that, especially with like the chapel and the library. Yes, something about Yay. that, the ambience is just really nice, I think. And um, very much what I like, like that's definitely my aesthetic. And how was your experience here? 
So um, St. Thomas was great to me, honestly, very accommodating. Um, I wasn't, I didn't sign up for the, to be um, part of the disabilities um, program, what they have here, but um, they gave me the option, but um, I decided not to, but I did need to sign. I first started with only taking, I was a part-time student when I started because I had surgeries that were like always taking me off of campus and um, keeping me in the hospital. This was just in freshman year. So I told them that, you know, I want to start, but I don't know if I can take on the full load yet. And they were like, that sounds, that's perfectly fine. We just, you know, we work with what you, you know, what you can do. And then we build back up to full-time you know, student after the fact. So um, I started with the, taking only three classes, no, two, and then three the, sec the second semester. And then when I became a sophomore, I, I became a full-time student. So I actually graduated um, I had, I had to take five years basically to graduate, basically. But um, they were very accommodating and I appreciated that. All the professors were great, um, just very receptive. I I just really, I, I just had good vibes really from pretty much everyone I encountered, so yeah. Yeah, and okay, you studied business, right? Yes. Your undergrad in business. Undergrad was, um, well, it was a bachelor, bachelor's in um, economics specifically, but generally business. Okay. Yeah. And then after you graduated from St. Thomas, what yeah. happened next? So my life was like at a standstill right after I graduated because um, primarily because while I was here in school, I didn't take any like opportunities to do internships and stuff because I was having surgeries. So I was totally focused on like just the academia part of things and just getting great, you know, grades and graduating, you know, as fantastically as possible, with the best GPA and all that. And that's all great. But without like any kind of experience, like, you know, it just kills you when you get out there, you know, and I real I learned that the hard way, like after the fact, after graduating. So I only was able to work with a lot of nonprofits, actually just two, not a lot. I worked with two nonprofits. Um, and this was between 2015, which is when I graduated in 2016. So after a year of doing that, I just felt like, you know, this is ridiculous. I don't think this is what I want to keep doing. And at the end of the day, there weren't even nonprofits that were really things that I was interested in doing because I wanted to be a burn survivor advocate. And I wanted to, um, you know, be a bullying prevention advocate. These were things that I was interested in. And these nonprofits, they kept me hired. Yeah. But like, and I was learning stuff, but not really stuff I was interested in. So, um, I was like, let me just see if I can just go back to school and get my MBA. And a lot of times you're advised to work as much as you can first before going back for your MBA. Cause then, you know, it just, your experience informs your degree. But, um, I just didn't want to wait, you know, I just wanted to go back to just an environment that I was familiar with. And then kind of took it as a fresh start while I'm in school, I'm going to start, I'm going to work like once I get in school and just, you know, see if I can build some kind of experience while I'm here. And then when I get out there, maybe now have been equipped with a, you know, BA and an MBA, maybe that would like, you know, make me more hireable, you know? So that was my plan. That's why I came back. That's amazing. Yeah. That just shows, that's like really good advice for someone who's like a, a business major right mm -hmm. now and just in college right now, just mm -hmm. like how, important experiences and it's like it's who you know so important. It's that's so really important. good yeah even like even like even with like the experience like you said it's really it still comes down to like who you know a lot of times the opportunities that we first get end up being like through like connections you yeah. know um but even before the connections can work you have to have something to present like mm -hmm. something on the table and so yeah I would definitely advise like you know do not just like bury your head in your books like definitely even if it's not a paid internship but I recommend, you know, looking for those though, because I don't know, it just, it just looks more attractive, like on a C, on a CV. So yeah, that's okay. So you were on the business track. You're mm -hmm. like, yes, I'm going back to MBA. Yes. And then you got on America's <laughs> Got Talent. <laughs> America's Got Talent is, and will always be that like moment in my life that like was like a dream come true. It was a dream that I never even had, you know, until I was experiencing it. And I realized that this is something that I've always wanted to do. I just never dared to dream for something like this, even less so after the accident, because now I look so different. And I just felt like if I ever wanted to be in, in like entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. now it's like the odds are like stacked way against me because it's a very visual industry. So I just felt like whatever I may have wanted to do with that, it's just not going to work out ever, you know? So, um, and it wasn't like I was like, mad or sad about it. It was just like something I thought was just fact. I just accepted it. So um, I was plowing through a different path because I was so convinced this one would not work. Um, and then while I was, this was, uh, I think I'd finished a year in my MBA program. I was in the second, no, no, semester. 
second semester was um, when the magic happened, I guess. When one of my friends signed me up for the show online without telling me and um, effectively changed my life. You know, I, I know she, this is a friend that has always told me to sign up for one of these shows, like all my life, literally. And I just was never, ever going to do it. You know, my dad would also tell me the same thing. Whenever I send like music that I recorded to like the family, just like covers, they'd be, he'd, he'd be the one that'd be like, you need to, you know, check out American Idol, do something with this, you know? And I was just like, this is just fun. Don't kill, like, this is just, this is just fun. You know, don't, you know, make this, I'm, I'm not trying to commercialize this, you know? But the truth is I was just afraid of like taking that step and just being rejected like I expected to be. So my friend was just like, you know, screw it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sign you up. She did, she filled out the online application as me and like even like wrote a description like hi my name is Ketchy you know I'm 27 I do this and that. like she she had it down pat and submitted and then she put her email so she was like you know if they reject you you wouldn't even see it you know I'll be the one to get the rejection it's cool so it was like you know what fine do, do whatever you want you know so um when she told me she did that I was like okay um but I didn't expect anything to happen obviously mm -hmm. and then the cool thing that happened after that was while I was you know in the middle of school and everything um, Kel Scott talent was mm -hmm. being um, promoted. And I remember seeing that a lot when I was an undergrad, but I just never participated because I was like, you know, why would I, you know, do that? <laughs> but then now it was like, hmm, she put this idea of like the shoe in my head. And now I was just like, should we just see how this goes? Like, let me just, let's just see a little something, mm -hmm. you know? So I signed up and ended up winning that, like what? that year, which was cool. And then like fast forward like a month, after that experience, I got my first phone call from AGT, from an agent saying that you know, her name was Destiny and she saw my application and they think like my background is so cool and my my experience and they saw my video and I didn't even know she's my friend sent a video. She'd just be doing whatever she wants. So they <laughs> she sent it in and they were like actually interested in like, they, they kept like keeping in contact with me, asking me questions, telling me to send more and more songs, more and more recordings. And they just seemed very serious about having me on the show. I really didn't believe they would do it until I was actually standing on the X and like staring at the judges. And I was like, okay, holy crap. So I'm actually here. These people were not kidding, you know? And it was the most nerve wracking thing ever, but um, it ended up being like the most incredible experience, so. Oh, <laughs> that's a true friend you have right there. Yeah, she's a keeper, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get into music in the first place? So, um, you know, like everyone else, grew up with music and um, had a lot of like very strong music influences, um, especially my dad, who um, grew up on like classics. So I, I heard a lot of like, you know, um, Whitney Houston, Celine Dion um, growing up. That was like just where I always heard, like I was always listening to like all these female vocalists, male as well. And so, you know, I just loved music, like I guess anyone else does. And then the singing was like a separate thing that started after like I started high school. I loved singing, but honestly, it, my voice was was good, I think, but it was not what it became after the accident. You know, um, after the accident happened, my voice definitely, like there was a weird change in my voice like my singing voice for sure that like my mom everyone noticed and like that's not how you used to sound what's going on and I just be like look I don't even know what's going on uh, we're just gonna take this as a weird you know positive thing that's come out of this mm -hmm. horrible situation and just run with it and that was basically what music became for me it became when my voice changed I got more confident singing songs that I loved and then music just became this like anchor for me in a very well the worst time of my life, you know, right after the accident happened, it was like the one thing I could do and enjoy that didn't cause me any pain. And no matter what kind of situation I was in, I could sing, I could enjoy music. So um, it became just such a, it, it just, it grounded me a lot in that time. And then later on, after I moved to America, Shriners put me in their music therapy program because I, they knew that I loved singing. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about Shriners, like they have a very holistic, like, you know, approach to healing. And they don't want to just heal you like physically, but like everything about you, they want to heal like just your entire being as much as they can. And so involving music in my treatment was the best thing they could have done for me because then, you know, I just, that was like, you know, phys ther phys physical therapy was always going to suck, but music therapy was always going to be fun. So I always looked forward to like the days I had both because I know that after this painful one, I'm going to have the fun one. And um, 
music therapy was just so amazing. It was an escape, you know, when things got really hard. And I just really appreciate Stranders for doing that for me. And I think from there, I just started realizing how much I really love this thing, you know, love expressing myself this way. I actually had my first concert experience in Shriners where I sang for some of the patients, the kids. It was so cute. They were so excited. Um, I was so nervous, but like that was my first time like feeling that like feeling of like being on the stage and singing for people that were like, you know, just my family members. So, um, and this was in 2009, I believe, like a year before I started here. Uh, in, as an undergrad. And so music just became that thing, like, you know, that I just really enjoyed and be, it was a hobby and it was my love. And um, after a while I joined my worship team because my mom would be like, you know, do something with this. So um, that's as far as I was going to take it, you know, singing in church and that was it. But yeah, it's, it's something that's very important to me. So yeah, but and then you took it even further and getting on America's Got yes. Talent. Yes, <laughs> who saw? I did not see that coming. Honestly, like I'm just really grateful for the kind of response that I got, and um, it's definitely given me a lot more confidence to approach the art. To also, you know, learn because I before the show I hadn't had any lessons or anything like that. You know, I hadn't taken it seriously. But when I saw that, you know, there might be something here, I started doing that. You know, I started mm -hmm. having vocal coaching and. You know, there's a lot you can learn off of like YouTube also, which I do. And just basically taking this art form seriously. Yeah. After the fact, after the show. And so then what happened after the show? So um, America's Got Talent did wonders for my platform. I, I wasn't even trying to build a platform. They just kind of, it just happened. And I now had this that was steadily growing and people that were actually feeling I think the main thing for me for continuing on the path they set me on was seeing how inspired and how much hope just my story seemed to bring to other people. But now you're back. So sorry to go back to what you were saying before yes. mm -hmm. um, about taking a break and now yes. you're back. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Yeah, it's I'm really like, honestly, I had no clue when I would get a chance to do this. Had COVID not happened, I don't know that I would have had the oh. time to even like continue my yeah. MBA right now. You know, um, the fact is that this, you know, global pandemic slowed life down for a lot of people, mm -hmm. myself included, especially travel, which was a big part of my life. Like yeah. I would travel at least four or five times in one month. And this is just counting like the going trip, like so like eight flights at least, you know, per month. So it was just impossible at that time with that kind of schedule mm -hmm. to keep up with school and not have my grades like suffer, mm -hmm. you know? So um, honestly, COVID definitely just slowing that down and restricting travel put me in a place where I was like basically mostly at home. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my events transformed into Zoom events and um, some were just altogether canceled. Some were moved and postponed to um, future dates. And so I just found myself with this block of time. So it was like, okay, so what are you gonna do now? Like, are you just gonna, just do your events. You can, I mean, I can just keep doing my Zoom events and just, you know, you know, keep just, you know, making money that way and, you know, just, you know, living and just chilling. Mm -hmm. But then now just the freer I was, the more the, like, I, I thought about my MBA, you know, I'm just like, it's unfinished, like catchy, it's unfinished. You need to finish this. I'm just like, God, okay. So, okay. So let's just see what we can do. Let's shave out some time and, and just actually see if this is actually going to work out. So I first reached out to the school and um, one of my friends that works here and was like, hey, I'm trying to come back. How possible do you think it is? This was in July. So there was not a lot of time to, you know, make things happen. But like the moment I like, cause I, before I talked to him, I, I prayed about this. I was like, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this right now, Lord. But like, look, mm -hmm. if it's going to happen, you will make it happen. And that's just the way it is. So. Once I told him that, like, the ball started rolling so quickly. And before I knew it, I was literally enrolled. So I was just like, wow, okay. So I suppose this was meant to happen then. So I'm really happy I took that step because, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I anticipate my life becoming busy again, like, especially next year. Um, so I don't know that I would have any other time to do this than now, you know. So I think I'm really happy I restarted. I'm really happy that... Once again, you know, as usual, the school was very accommodating. Mm -hmm. And um, now I'm able to, you know, finally finish what I started. That's awesome. Okay, so you're studying entrepreneurship, your MBA in entrepreneurship, yes, correct? correct. What do you want to do with that? Like, what's the goal? I think the, the f 
because my um, concentration was economics before, and that was based off of the fact that I just really loved the subject. But now that I'd experienced life and I had seen the trajectory that my life was going in, I was able to see, you know, um, I, I was able to kind of approach my MBA with a different kind of lens. So it was less about just doing what you, what subject you like, just for the sake of liking the subject. Mm -hmm. And it was more about something practical that would actually inform my real life. So, you know, I was, you know, living a life of like, you know, influencing and, you know, traveling and singing and all that. And at the end of the day, what I'm doing is building a brand. That's what I'm trying to mm -hmm. do. And um, the hope is to continue to grow that brand on different platforms and to establish myself as like, you know, a legit, like, you know, speaker or like a, a musician, you know, author. These are things that I love to do and I want to keep doing for a long time. However, there is only so much you can learn from just Googling stuff randomly, you know, and just, you know, <laughs> trying to learn as you go. Like there's a lot of DIY, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of information out there. If you want to just learn something, and that's pretty much what I did for like throughout the pandemic. Most of us did that, you know, mm -hmm. just learning stuff on YouTube. But like, there's so much to be gained from like a, like a proper like path in education, mm -hmm. like going into um, academia and, and learning like actual accurate, you know, proven, you know, skills mm -hmm. and tools that will help you in whatever field you choose to pursue, I feel like that was the main thing that informed this change in my concentration. And like, I, I did not see it coming, but I, I was now in a place where I was an entrepreneur. This was what I was doing. That's, I didn't, I thought I would work for someone, but you know, time has passed and I'm earning money working essentially for myself. So that's, you know, what I have become. Therefore, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, and pursue something, do it well. And so I want to say that at least, you know, I've gone the route of like formal education where I can learn what I can learn from school and trust that information and then use those things I learned to inform my life as an entrepreneur. So that's why I switched to, to that concentration. That makes a lot of sense. I feel like with how your life is going. Mm, yeah. yeah. I felt the, way, the same way too. Yeah. So. Um, and so after you do your, how long does your MBA take? So it's two years. Um, okay. so I've done one, I just have one more. Oh, okay. Mm. And so then what's next? What are you going to do? So, um, my plan after my MBA, I really, honestly, I know that I, I kind of see my life in like different stages mm -hmm. of, the, of big things that are happening right now. Big thing happening for me is school. And then, um, the next big thing that's happening is my book release. That's going to be March, 2022. So I'm going to be in the middle of school while that happens. <laughs> and I don't know how I'm going to do that because there's going to be like book launches and travel and stuff. But um, I suspect that, um, you know, it's going to work out somehow. But like that's that's the next big thing that's coming in my life. And after that would be graduating with my MBA. You know, that's the next big thing as well. So it's just kind of like, you know, um, working like making sure that every day that um, that I live, I'm working towards, you know, hitting those milestones um, and being ready for those milestones when they come. So you have your book coming out March 22. Yes. Um, anything else you want to shout out, talk about? Where can people find you? Oh, yeah. So I'm on all social media platforms, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. I'm catchy on all those platforms. Um, yeah, just look for the um, blue tick and that's me. And then... Um, yeah, my book is coming out. Um, I put, I update my website all the time, catchyofficial.com, on like everything new that's happening with me, new music that I have that's out and that I'm yet to release. And yeah, just, you know, I hope people kind of just, you know, keep, you know, following me and stay interested <laughs> in just, you know, how my life is unfolding and, you know, just me also getting back into the grind, you know, being a student, you know, I'm looking forward to, well, not looking forward to, <laughs> Not going to lie, but more like um, I'm preparing myself, yeah. you know, for, you know, how hectic is, it's definitely going to get, you know, just being in school and having exams and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's of been course. a pleasure. All right, guys, this has been a bold podcast. Thanks so much for watching. Stay bold, my friends. Bye. Bold is a podcast produced by Max Studios at University of St. Thomas in Houston. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Max Studios UST. 